Hi, I'm Brad Fenson, and today I'm going to show you how to make some rouladen. Rouladen is a, a very old dish made in Germany, and it depends what region of the country you are from, you might have different recipes. We've got a high mountain jerky board here today. We are going to cut up some deer meat for making jerky, but we're also going to make lunch today. We're going to make whitetail rouladen. But we're going to use the jerky board to cut the pieces of rouladen perfect thicknesses so that they're all the same. I'm going to show you how. We've got some beautiful venison rounds. You can see that long grained meat. With the high mountain jerky board, there's actually two different thicknesses here. This is about an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. So if you like your jerky different thicknesses, it's easy to do. You basically lay these on the board. There's a safety here to make sure you don't cut your fingers. And then you just get your knife on the edge and you just follow it all the way to the end. And what you end up with is a perfect slice of jerky meat. But in our case, we're gonna make some rouladen and that's what we're gonna use these for. So we're just gonna set these aside. We're gonna cut the next one. Finger safety guard on. Knife flush with the bottom. It says right here, quarter inch on this one. This one's 3 eighths, so that's the actual sizing. And we just run this through. Like I said, if you're making jerky, this is super easy and you have very consistent slices of meat to work with. So this is a really simple recipe. You can write it down, you can probably get it off the webpage when we're done here. Uh, rounds, whether you're using venison, moose, elk, or even beef. You got dill pickles, your favorite mustard, whether it's a Dijon or a whole grain, some bacon, and some red onion. Let's build a few. Some mustard, spread nice and even. Ooh, there's lots of different varieties. I've even used mustard with horseradish in the past. Uh, it works extremely well on here too. There's the onion, some bacon. There we go. Get a nice dill pickle in there. Because this is a smaller end, I'm going to put it in the center. I'm just going to double this over. So again, it's not fancy, it's not hard. You just have to put them together and roll them up. Ready for the fry pan. We've got a couple of these built up, and what we're gonna do is use the cast iron frying pan to fry them up and brown them. I prefer cast iron, I usually use a Camp Chef because you get a really nice browning on the meat. But what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Because deer is so lean, you need something to keep them from sticking. And we're just gonna turn our heat on medium high. You can see how the oil naturally spread out across the pan. If you just take a single drop of water, you can see that it pops and dances. That tells you that you're ready to fry and brown. It's gonna put a really nice brown on this meat. And of course we got toothpicks in here, so we just wanna lay it flat. You can hear it sizzle right off the bat. So you know that we're gonna brown these up very nicely. And you just go in the pan, lay them out where we can get at them with some tongs and turn them over. Beautiful. Sometimes you can build these and not put a toothpick in and they'll actually shrink up and hold together real nice, but it really does make it simple to just put a toothpick in and ensure they're not gonna fall apart in your frying pan. Well, we've had them in here about uh, three minutes approximately. And if you actually watch your heat, you'll see that the meat starts to show you when it's cooking through. And that usually indicates when it's starting to creep up the sides that the meat's gonna be nicely browned underneath. So when we grab these with the tongs and actually go to turn them, we're gonna find that the meat is really nicely browned on the bottom side. And we're gonna try to do that to all four sides of these. You can now use a roast pan, a slow cooker, a cast iron Dutch oven, but we just wanna lay these in here. Look at, look at the brown on this meat. I mean, that adds flavor here, but it's also gonna give you incredible gravy out of the pan. So these are turning out awesome. We're just gonna line those up in the pan real nice. Look at those. Beautiful. Traditionally, if you were in Germany, you would make your gravy out of beef broth or red wine or beer, but we have some beef consomme. Beef broth works awesome. You just want to pour this into the pan and basically deglaze the pan. So we put this in and we're going to just get a, a whisk. And what we want to do is whisk it so that we release all of the brownings off the bottom of the pan from all of the white tail that we fried in here. So you can use uh, flour or cornstarch for making your gravy. It's usually about a quarter cup of uh, flour to a cup of water. And 
the important thing is to blend it really well so that you don't have lumps in your gravy. Nobody likes a lumpy gravy. Just go back to your pan and just stir it in slow. This isn't a race. You just want to put it in nice and slow. And you'll see your gravy start to thicken. You don't need to add salt and pepper. Uh, lots of flavor naturally out of the meat. And we're going to take this and put it right over top of our roulades in the pan. So just put your gravy in there. Clean that pan right out. All right, have a look at here. Whitetail roulade. We've taken those roasts, we've sliced them up thin. We got mustard and onion and bacon and dill pickles in there. Made gravy and they've been getting real happy. Cooked for a couple hours. Next time you get some whitetails, you have your round roasts, try some roulade. Super easy to make and very flavorful. I'm sure the whole family will like them.